All right, this is going to be the start of a video series in which I'm going to take you step by step through the production of the finished version of the constant current pulse width modulation circuit designed to regulate the amount of HHO output from a brute force cell, be it cold in the beginning of the morning or hot at the end of the day. I think one of the one of the major problems and stumbling blocks that we're running into is the fact that we end up with such an uneven production that we can't optimize it for a continuous run throughout the entire day. So here here are the basic components to the to the system. I'm going to start with the box. This is a a Velleman G106 uh sealed housing enclosure. It is about four and a half inches long, about two and a half inches deep and about one and a quarter inches high like that okay you'll see inside this box there are grooves along the side walls and these grooves are designed to accept printed circuit boards that run perpendicular to the to the base of the box so you could put two or three of these uh, in the box, and I've never actually seen anybody use these boxes that way. It's kind of unusual. In fact, not only have I not seen anybody use the vertical slots in these boxes to put printed circuit boards in, but these are actually going to get in the way. Uh, I will either take a a Dremel tool and grind these flush with the with the back surface, or in, and actually all the side walls of the of the box itself, which will allow me to take the uh, power MOSFET and mount it to the side along the edge any place that I want rather than being restricted to just a couple of different locations based on where these where these uh, raised pieces of the casting are that form the slots for the PC board. But you'll also notice that in the four corners we have um, mounting mounting screws that would allow a board to occupy the entire uh, size of this box. So we're not going to occupy nearly that much space, but I do have my, my blank printed circuit board here. Uh, the spacing of the holes is 0.1 inch, so there are 10 holes to the inch, which is standard spacing that allows for integrated circuits such as this to mount straight through the holes on the board and other components around it. I'll be cutting a piece out of this that will be will probably just take up a small section of the end of one end of this box and it will actually be a board smaller than this first prototype of the PC board that I manufactured for the multi-frequency uh, pulse width modulator that did not have current limiting. Let's see if I can get a close-up of this. Alright, so there's the close-up of that board. And you can see the terminals that I used to make my connections to the edge of the board very easily there. All right, they did just push through the board and are soldered at the bottom. Now underneath the board, see if I can get a good angle in this, you can see how I simply soldered the components point to point as if it were a printed circuit board. And some of the some of the jumper wire that I use is just merely copper telephone uh, or networking wire that we use uh, on punch down blocks for making connections to 25 pair and uh, interconnecting pieces of uh, telecommunications equipment. So that's it. It's just this wire here. Now some of the comp components that are going into it, I have a couple of binding posts for applying for getting power into the box. Of course I have my LM324 integrated circuit chip. I have my IR let's see. Can't read it. IRFP064N power MOSFET. This is a 9 volt regulated uh, regulator chip paid $1.69 for that at my local electronics store cables and connectors in Newington, Connecticut. Uh, these folks have everything, albeit 
not very cheap, but if you need something quick, this is the place in Connecticut to get it. So there you go, guys. That's that's your plug. You didn't know you were getting that plug, but you got one anyway. Um, a couple of electrolytic capacitors. These were like 39 cents a piece. Now there are eight different resistor values that comprise the circuit design. So I bought one package of resistors, and each package has 50 resistors in a package, and they're about $3 a package, and I, I plan to make a few of these. So um, I'm going to have plenty of these resistors. These are 5% tolerance resistors. You can buy them in much smaller quantities and pay a little bit less, get 2% tolerance resistors, but you don't really need that close tolerance. These are the trimmer potentiometers that I will be using for the for the circuit. All right, get an idea there. They're 20 turn trimmer potentiometers. There will be holes drilled in the sides of the in the side of the uh, cast aluminum housing to insert a small screwdriver into to adjust the frequency, the pulse width modulation, the uh, pulse width duration, and the maximum current limiting setting. Circuit design comprises three different values of these, so I have uh, three packages, each of a different value of the trimmer potentiometers. I have a couple of different values of disk ceramic capacitors. And I have some machine hardware with wing nuts and nylon washers that are going to allow me to create high current connections in and out of this box uh, necessary to carry the, the extremely high amperage that the uh, switching circuit will actually deliver from such a small package as this. So that's the beginning of the project and uh, we'll be sh I'll be showing you some of the assembly techniques uh, along the way and how I how I go about soldering them so that you get some idea of the uh, tedious nature of what it takes to assemble one of these circuits if you think this is something that you can attempt on your own then please by all means do so I'm, I'm providing you all of the necessary uh, schematics diagrams and uh, pictures along the way if it's something that is beyond your grasp, this is something that you want to enlist the services of a friend or a family member to help you out with who has had more experience building circuits. That way uh, you have a better chance of, of succeeding because I know the circuit works, it's tested, and uh, it, is a, it is a proven design. So Now, I know I'm jumping around a little bit with my projects, uh, jumping in between the internal combustion engine and this, but I do have some obligations to create a couple of these for uh, the EBN testing, some testing of the EBN cell and uh, a couple of the members of the corporation need to have these so uh, this, this is where I'm going to be focusing my attention this week on getting this these two a uh, couple of these boards completed and then uh, returning back to the internal combustion engine and hopefully getting that to run on 100% AHO real soon. That's it for now. Zero Fossil Fuel signing out. Everybody have fun. Please be safe.